You might have wondered from time to time, what does the British Queen do all day when she's not cutting ribbons or waving to people from gilded horse-drawn carriages? She's human, of course, so we know she wakes up in the morning, likely heads over to the bathroom, gets dressed, and then later has a bit of breakfast. But what's in between? Does she turn on morning TV, read the newspaper, check her social media accounts, call her friends or Google her name to see what the media is saying about her? Maybe she heads over to YouTube to see the latest infographics show installment. That might sound funny to you, but the Queen must have a normal life doing everything everyday things around her official duties as the UK's monarch. Let's now try to find out just what those things are. Here's some basic information about her first. She was born on the 21st of April 1926, which makes her a ripe 93 years old. Yeah, she doesn't likely get about as much as she used to do being that old. She took the throne on February 6, 1952, and this not only makes her the oldest living monarch, but also the longest reigning current monarch. If you didn't know, there are 28 monarchies in the world right now, and she's been in the big seat much longer than any other monarch. She was in second place for a long time until Thailand's Bumibu Arunyede passed away in 2016. So when it comes to work experience, she has the longest resume. You can just imagine what that looks like. Current occupation, queen. Date started, 1952. Duties, trying to stay neutral in politics. Meeting with the prime minister, a lot. Traveling around, ceremonies, lots of ceremonies. Previous occupation, homemaker. But what does she do all day when she's not in an official role? Well, it seems she keeps a lid on her personal feelings for the most part. Looking at bios of Queen Elizabeth, we hear things like she does a lot for charity. She likes riding horses, and we know that for sure because we can see it in photos. She also likes dogs, and especially the breed called the Corgi. But is that it? She rides horses and pets her dogs? Surely she must have seen Breaking Bad or perhaps gets down with some good literature now and again. Let's look further. According to recent reports, she's doing much less than she used to and hasn't attended a number of events that she usually goes to because of her failing health. But when she's in good health, according to some sources, she has a regular routine. She takes a bath in the morning. But first, the police officer standing outside her room will clock off from his shift. The time is usually around 7.30 a.m. The first thing she does, of course, is go to the bathroom, and while we can't exactly say what she does in there, the Daily Mail reports that she does take a daily bath. The water, the report said, is 7 inches deep, and a servant will always test the temperature with a thermometer to make sure it's just right. While she's in the bathtub, three women called her royal dressers will pick out the queen's outfit for the day. And this is done under the supervision of someone with the title of the queen's personal assistant and curator of her wardrobe. She might have to change the outfit, though, as many as five times during the day. The mail says the queen never chooses any of them and relies on these people to make the right fashion choice. Of course, her style is all based on what she'll be doing, so the people in charge of dressing her know exactly where the queen will be going all day long. Once a week after this, she'll get a haircut, and this is done by a special royal barber, and she might listen to BBC Radio 4 around this time. If she's not getting a cut, another of the servants will be in charge of brushing the queen's hair and making sure she keeps that style she's had for a very long time. Apparently, the first thing she does after this is look at the day's newspapers, which for her would have been a depressing affair on many days during her reign. She then looks at the letters that are sent to her from the public, and some reports tell us she gets around 300 of these every day. Some sources say she replies to some of them, but it's more likely that if any reply is given, that it's her ladies-in-waiting or her private secretary. She might also receive mail from the heads of state and other official correspondents. Someone from the public might well get a reply, but it won't be from the queen herself and instead just one of those ladies in waiting. These people are just like assistants, but they are women, of course. In one case, one of these aides replied to a letter from a young boy who had written to the queen and said he liked horses and would she like to see his. This is the reply. Although unable to accept your invitation to come to your house for tea because of her very busy schedule, the queen greatly appreciated your kind thought of her, and Her Majesty was pleased to learn that you too like horses. So there you go, she seems to look at her fan mail. By the way, if you want to write to her, you can send your letter to Her Majesty the Queen, Buckingham Palace, London, SW1A1AA. You're supposed to start it with Madam and end it with I have the honor to be Madam, Your Majesty's humble and obedient servant, but apparently she won't complain if you slack on the formalities. After the mail is done, she then meets with her private secretaries and talks about her official papers and documents. She may also have a sit down or two with what are called audiences, and these only last about 10 to 20 minutes. Then it's time for lunch, and she takes that privately or she entertains guests. But what does she like to eat? 
According to former royal chef Darren McGrady, her diet isn't always exactly in line with health fads. She loves chocolate and she loves biscuits, aka cookies, with her tea, Earl Grey tea, no milk, no sugar. She is also partial to cake and the occasional cucumber or salmon sandwich. On a normal day, she'll eat four times. For breakfast, she reportedly likes cereal, maybe a boiled egg and some tea. Her favorite cereal is Special K, Quaker Oats, and Weetabix. On other days, she might just have toast and marmalade. According to that royal chef, lunch might get a bit more elaborate and include four courses. The entree might be something like a tomato mousse with lobster, but she also loves game. The main course is often pheasant or venison. She'll also have a dessert and a bit of fruit. The chef said on days she's eating alone, the meal is usually simpler and might just be lean meat with vegetables. Apparently for lunch, she only eats small portions, but she has a vice in that with lunch, she'll usually sip a gin and Dubonnet. That's a sweet aperitif. She keeps the carbs low too, refusing to eat potatoes, rice, or pasta for lunch. He also said she's really not a big foodie, unlike some of the rest of her family. But she'll snack throughout the day, and that means more tea, more biscuits, more cake, and more chocolate. She might also have a sandwich, a scone, or a bit of fruit. For dinner, it might be game if she didn't have it for lunch, or it might be fish or steak. This is washed down with champagne, and if the mood takes her, she might use one of these condiments with her meal. Lee and Perrin's, HP sauce, and Heinz ketchup. We spent some time on that, but it's very important to know that eating is a big part of her daily routine. It seems her very diet and chocolate binges have helped her live a long life. After lunch, she might take a look at Britain's main horse racing newspaper, The Racing Post, because she has a fondness for horses and racing. The Daily Mail suggests that she might take a walk in the gardens, and for this she likes to be alone. The afternoon might be busy, but that depends on whether she has royal engagements. When she does, she might visit four places a day. Before this, she has read a brief about who she'll be meeting. In 2016, she had 430 of these kinds of engagements over the entire year. This keeps her pretty busy, and she'll do the visits by region if possible, so she doesn't have to travel much. At the end of the afternoon, she might see her privy council and also government ministers. That's pretty much the day done, and she can settle for dinner that we talked about. Once a week, she'll meet with the prime minister, usually on a Wednesday at around 6.30 p.m., and every evening after dinner, she'll read the day's parliamentary proceedings. And this will be written by one of the government's whips. Can she settle yet? Well, she may have a show to go to or have to host an event within the palace, but this doesn't happen much and especially at her age now. In the past, she was much more active in the evening. If she's got nothing to do, there's one thing she loves, and that's watching TV. Apparently, she has seen the Netflix show which depicts her own life called The Crown. It was her son and daughter-in-law that got her onto that. A royal source told a British newspaper this, they have a Netflix account and urged her to watch it with them. Happily, she really liked it, although obviously there were some depictions of events that she found too heavily dramatized. But The Crown isn't her favorite TV treat, and she loves British game shows. She's also into British TV drama centered around the police force, the soap opera EastEnders, the show Downton Abbey, and the iconic British science fiction show Doctor Who. Apparently, she likes to binge watch the latter when she's on vacation at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. She also watches the British reality talent show called The X Factor and has seen many of them. One time she met one of the contestants and said to her, you are the lady off The X Factor, your song was fabulous. So there you go, when the queen puts up her feet, she does what many other British people do and settles in for a long night on the sofa watching soaps, dramas, and reality TV. We expect at this age though, being buzzed from her champagne, she might quickly fall asleep as the TV plays. If she reads, she seems to go for the page-turning thriller novel and, better still, stories with horse racing in them. We're told that 11 p.m. is the time she usually says, that's enough, time for bed. But some reports tell us before she turns off the light, she writes in her diary. She's reportedly been doing this since her reign started. And wouldn't we all like to see what's in that diary? And that's the story of a day in the life of Queen Elizabeth II. What do you think about it? Is there more to it? Does she have a good life? Tell us what you think in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video, Why Did the King of England Execute His Wives? Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.